Hello, everyone. Welcome to Moose City Roasters in Northeast Minneapolis. Um, my name is Derek De La Paz. Today, we're going to do something super special. We're going to do the guest show. So, Steve, for my three-year anniversary this year, because I am a super dorky coffee person and I tend to love washed, delicate coffees, he went out and uh, sourced a Gesha for us to resell at Mill City. So it's super exciting, super fun. Um, so we got some. So we got some amazing Gesha too from La Esmeralda, very special stuff. So I spent a couple of weeks working on this coffee, uh, maybe more like a week actually. Um, I've roasted probably five or six batches at small amounts. It's a lovely coffee. Um, I've done a full cupping on it and descriptions and things like that. It's crazy. Uh, it's very delicate. It's very much like a, a wash coffee. You know, if you like uh, washed Ethios, if you like those type of coffees, this type of coffee is like that, but just like 10 times that. Coffee is just full of unique flavors. And it's almost like it makes time super important when it comes to the consumption of the coffee because the coffee as it sits in your cup changes. So when it's like one minute off a of brew, it's gonna have a certain flavor profile. Two minutes off brew, it's gonna evolve into something a little different. Three minutes off brew, four minutes off brew, you know, all the way to cold, it's gonna be a totally different cup. And then as it rests, it's gonna open up different things. So it's very much an experienced coffee. You're gonna get a lot of different experiences out of this coffee. I would highly suggest roasting it light. You know, we really want it to be light because destroying any of the delicate nuance in this coffee, I feel like that's really what this coffee is about. You know what I mean? It's a very special coffee. It's very expensive, small quantities. So we're gonna do the best we can with this coffee. Um, I've, so I've worked on this profile a little bit. So I have a pretty solid um, uh, idea of what I wanna do with the coffee. So it's a pretty classic roast. It's a little shorter than some of my roasts lower charge temp for a full charge on this. You know, like this coffee is low density. It's a big bean that's, that's low density. Now it's not Pacamara big. You know, it's like halfway between like a, maybe an Ethio and a Pacamara. You know, it's a little bit about the size of a, maybe a normal Colombian bean, but they're not round shaped. They're more like canoe shaped. They're like oblong, you know, so they're longer beans, but they're also low density. So they, they feel a little different and they sound a little different in the roaster. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit lower charge temp. You know, because I want to be a little gentle in the beginning of the roast, but also I want to move this coffee pretty fast because it's a short roast. So I can't like dilly dally with fuel application or wait too much. So I, I'm, I'm going to go on a little bit higher charge temp for what I normally do, you know what I mean, for low density coffee, but it's because I need to move the coffee fast. So it's kind of a balance between low energy input and being gentle with the coffee and also moving the coffee fast. I could go with a really high charge temp and then be gentle fuel application and still move it fast. But I think that shock of the really high charge temp on this low density Gesha isn't a good idea. So I'm gonna kind of be right in the middle. I'm gonna go with a median charge uh, temperature, but I'm gonna go with pretty high fuel and a short soak. So that's gonna be the way I'm gonna kind of deal with the gentle application of heat to a lower density coffee, but at the same token, moving this coffee fast because it needs to be a light, bright roast. So we don't wanna leave it in the roaster for a long time. So it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a challenge. This is like, it feels a little bit like roaster calisthenics. You know, like you really gotta think through what you're trying to do and you gotta really apply yourself. So I've done, like I said, I've done quite a bit of work on this coffee to get it to where it needs to be, but I've only done a couple 500 gram roasts. I did a lot of my development of this coffee on this machine, but at a 200 gram charge weight. So those, are, those parameters are totally different. My thermocouples aren't accurate and my fuel and air flows even, I'm changing a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I probably won't nail it. Let's cross our fingers and cross our toes because this is a very important roast, but we'll do our best. So I'm gonna give you all what we're gonna do here. I'm looking for a four minute dry end. I'm looking for a 715 first crack and I'm looking for plus minute 45, roughly to a pretty light roast level. I do have a sample right here of my roast that I'm gonna to use to marry. But just so you guys know too, I've done a little bit deeper dive on coffee for, for these last couple weeks and I'm trying to add in a little bit more technical data around the roasts and the coffee. So this is actually 13% moisture loss on this roast, exactly 13%. So I'll do that after, the, after but that's what this roast uh, creates. In the SCA Gourmet scale, it's a 63.4 finish color outside only on this bean. So those are the parameters for the roast. So pretty much I'm gonna try and do this roast. We're gonna do a full 500 gram charge. I have my airflow and fuel settings already set up and I have a plan right here. I'm actually gonna use my old system of data logging on paper for this roast. 
it keeps me a little bit more present and i feel like i have a little bit more ability to just be accurate and keep track of everything on my own. you know what i mean? so i'm not having to, to like flip my mind to a different thing or even look at a screen. i'm going to be right here with the paper and right here with the coffee. first i'm going to get my fuel to my starting fuel which is going to be 28. so i'm going to use 28 fuel which that even sounds aggressive right there and i'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to lower my air to my starting airflow, which I'm going to use 35 on this dial for this starting airflow. So I got 35 on the dial for my airflow. Fuel is off. I'm going to use 2.8 kPa at 30 seconds. So my first minute plan of this roast is basically charge at 370. I'm going to wait 30 seconds. I already have my airflow set to starting airflow. And then at 30 seconds, I'm going to hit the ignition switch. Theoretically, it's going to provide me with 2.8 kPa gas because that's what I set it up to. But I'm going to look at it and make sure it's accurate. And then from there, we're going to let it we're going to let it ride a little bit. Um, it's looking like my first planned adjustment is right around 3:30. I'm going to increase my air by a little bit to 40 in um, in expectation of green to yellow transition. You know, I'm hoping to expedite that green to yellow transition. But also, this coffee is a little more gentle, so I'm trying to like pull a little heat out of the steel and put it into the air a little earlier in the roast. So that's a little bit of my mindset there. But then right away after that, 3.30, four minutes, if, if we hit our green to yellow mark, I'm gonna do an airflow adjustment and a fuel adjustment at green to yellow. So we'll hopefully hit that at four minutes, that's our plan. But if the roast goes a little long, then we're just gonna wait at green to yellow is where we're gonna increase our air to medium and we're gonna lower our gas by about a KPA at that point. Okay, now we're coming up on our charge temp. All right, here we go. Loading the hopper. Here we go. I'm gonna do timer at 370. And oh, I went a little early. I was excited. I was so excited about the roast, I went early. I think it's the first time I've done that in probably like a year. So I'm gonna write that down. 371. Not that it's a big deal, but might as well be accurate. Okay, so now at 30 seconds, I'm gonna hit the button. Um, it's supposed to be 2.8 kPa, which will verify that after we hit the button. All right, we got the button in at 30 seconds, and we're looking at 2.79. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to say it's 2.8. You know, I'm not, I'm pretty good on that. Oh, and now just move. Oh, it's there, right there. Cool. All right, so we're good. So I'm going to make a little a little mark up by my my things that I've done those correctly. We have our 35 air. Okay. So now it's basically just focusing on the coffee. I'm going to watch the coffee take on color. I'll try and let you all know a little bit about what's going on. We don't have a lot of time in this roast, but I have planned this roast out quite a bit. So I should have a fair amount of bandwidth to discuss things. Um, we're at the one minute mark. I think we are, so in a lot of, in a lot of, a lot of context, I don't use the thermal couples a lot for these roasts because I've created these roasts with smaller charges on different machines. I was actually on this machine. Sometimes it's different machines. But when you do things like that, when you're using whack or wacky small charges, your thermocouples aren't being covered, so you can't really use the thermocouple data. If you're moving from machine to machine, the thermocouples are different, so you can't really use the thermocouple data. So in those contexts, you're really using the coffee as your guide. You know what I mean? So I'm really looking for the coffee to change color. I'm not really that worried about temperature so much. I do have a small note, though, that I have been seeing green to yellow around 3.30 on this machine with a full charge. So I do have that noted on my on my little book or on my little page, just so I can kind of see, uh, or I have a, like at least a, a, like a, a somewhat of a target range. And then I'm also going to record my minutes, which I missed that first minute, two minutes, 2:45 on my little sheet. This helps keep me uh, keep me honest, and it's also a really simple way to do my uh, ROR. You know what I mean? So every minute I'm going to plot my minute. And then I just have to subtract the previous minute from the current minute. And then it tells me what my last minute's ROR was. And that tells me how fast I'm moving, things like that. You know, it's, it's old data because it's the, it's the previous minute's data. It's a little bit weird, but for me, that's okay. I'm, I'm using that to predict how I'm moving forward. And I have a somewhat of understanding around how my adjustments are going to play out down the road. All right, I'm just going to make a quick check on the coffee. Everything looks very nice. There's just a subtle brightening of the coffee. Not really a lot, you know what I mean? So I'm not, not, uh, not, not really getting a lot of data. So now we're coming up to 2.45. So only a minute 15 from green to yellow transition. So this is a short roast, you know what I mean? So when you do these four minute or sub four minute dry end roasts, you don't really have much time to make an adjustment. You know what I mean? Like right now is when I would start seeing whether I'm on track or off track and I have a minute to get to my mark. And if I make a crazy adjustment, it's probably going to play itself out later on, which is beyond my mark, and that might be a mistake. So to certain contexts, I got to kind of let this roast ride a little bit. 
you know, in some context. You know what I mean? I think I could make an adjustment right around now to mid-mid to try and get this roast more on track or stay on track, but we're gonna have to just see how that goes. Now we're coming up to about 30 seconds from green to yellow. I am seeing a very, very nice brightening of the green. It's not even close to yellow, but it's taking on color quite a bit. So at 340, I'm gonna do my airflow increase. And that was it right there. Okay, now we have 20 seconds to transition. It's taking on heat. Well, we're moving fast. We might hit the mark, but I'm gonna say 415 is probably gonna be more realistic. So that's when we're gonna move our adjustments then of lowering gas and another increase of air minor to medium. Okay, we're almost there. I'm gonna get on the trier. Ooh, we're close, but we're not gonna hit it. Okay, that's four minutes, 326. I'm gonna write that down just so we have that marked. All right, I think I'm almost there. Yep, we're really close. I'm using the sight glass on this one because I have a really nice sight glass on this machine and I can really use it for green to yellow. Okay, it's like we're gonna go right there. 420, 338. So I'm going 45 and then I'm lowering my gas to 18. So that was 420. I'm gonna make a little note on that. 420 DE. And that was when I hit, I did my 18 and my 45. So I, I lowered the gas by one KPA. So now we're only at 18 KPA. And then I increased my gas to what would be the medium, or I mean my air, I'm sorry, would be the medium airflow on this machine. And that stuff I've already worked out ahead of time over experience, but also with the lighter trick. We do have a lighter trick video. Definitely get a lighter, keep it by your roaster and use the lighter trick to constantly verify your air flows on your roaster. Empty drum, full drum. Okay, now we're gonna get on the trier a little bit just to see the development. Oh man, it's a beautiful tan color. This coffee just really looks pretty when it roasts. It's one of those coffees that tastes amazing, but also looks pretty amazing, I wanna say. It's a, it's a, it's a, little, it's a, it's a washed type process, but it's eco-pulped or something. In Panama, they, they do very unique stuff. And so this is a, I, I'm gonna call it a fancy wash process, but it very much takes on color. I don't know, a little bit like a natural. It's funny, it doesn't take on color like a traditional wash for me. And I think that's a density factor. Okay, now we're coming up on 540. So now I'm looking at making an adjustment down in gas at six minutes. So it's six minutes, even though we were a little late, so it really should be 615, because when we're off, once we get green to yellow, we just add on our phases to that. We don't, we don't speed up or slow down at that point. Adjustments are a little harder. So I'm gonna wait a little bit on this adjustment, even though my gut tells me I should make it right now, because I feel like we're gonna come up on crack a little early. I'm waiting, and I'm gonna do it at the 615 mark, which is what it would truly be for this profile. So right there, I did it. I, I think I heard an outlier. So now we're looking for 7.30 first crack. My gut tells me we're gonna hit it a little early. You know, I'm hearing a little bit, so I'm gonna make a, an airflow adjustment right there to 50, and that was at 6.30. So I'm gonna put that down, 50 air, and one on the gas. I'm gonna lower the gas to 0.8, a little bit lower, and that is at 640. I'm gonna make that adjustment, 640.8 kPa, and I think we're right about to crack. I'm gonna call that 650. So we got a 650 crack. So we came into crack quite a bit early. So our goal was 7.30, wow. So we came into crack about 6.50, 40 seconds early to keep it accurate to phases, you know what I mean? But now we're gonna stick to it. So 6.50 plus a minute 45, it's gonna be 6, 7.50, 7.50, So it's looking like we want 8.35 for our final uh, time, roughly. We're gonna look at roast level. I'm gonna get on the trier a little bit right now. Although I can see in the sight glass, we got some nice color going, you know what I mean? We're not moving very fast. We're moving at a pretty slow rate right now. I'm gonna lower my gas a little bit more to 0.5 at 740. I'm gonna make that note. And now we're just gonna let this ride basically at this point. Yep, we got the airflow right. We got our 0.5 gas right. We're just gonna let this ride a little bit. We got about another 35, 40 seconds to go. So I'm gonna take a little trier action and just compare. Oh, yep, looking really good. We're not moving a lot, you know what I mean? Like we might go a degree and a half before we discharge this, but 35, we got 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. 
probably 405, you know what I mean? We'll see. We're moving very slow. I'm going to get my cooling tray up and ready to go. We're coming down to the last 35 seconds or last 20 some seconds. Color looks really good. Crack is just about stopped to stopping. I'm killing the fuel because we've got plenty of momentum. We're only going a few more seconds. Crack is just ebbing off right now. We're at 405. Air on. Discharge. 435 to 405. Sorry, 835 to 405. Slow down. Reset my timer. Turn my timer off. All right. I'm liking it. It's so this is a like I said, it's a lower density, pretty big big bean, and it's a. Um, we're not doing a lot of development, you know what I mean? So it's not swelling a lot, it's not smoothing a lot, it's not taking on a lot of color. So it looks like a pretty solid light roast in the tray, you know? I'd say there's a fair amount of lacking development, a lot of wrinkliness in the surface. The flat side of the bean is very ridgy, and there's some like dark color still where it hasn't swollen at all, you know what I mean? So it's, it's on the lighter side. But like I said, there's 13% moisture loss in this roast which we might have been a little less on this one because we went a little faster. So this is probably more like 12.75, I want to say, 12.6 moisture loss. We'll do a light tails reading and a moisture loss on this roast after it's done cooling in the tray. It'll probably take another two or three minutes, but I consider this a success. I haven't roasted this roast enough too to know if this shorter mid phase might be better. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be better because my mid phase was already pretty short. And then taking 40 seconds out off of it is a, is, a, is a lot, in my opinion, for this short of a mid phase. So it's a pretty different cup. So I'm predicting this is going to be a little thinner of body than the ideal. Still going to be a great cup, but it's going to be a little thinner of body and maybe a little less sweet and a little more acidic, which is probably going to be a super solid light roast. Although I tend to like my light roast being a little more balanced by extending the mid phase and developing a little more sweetness and body that then balance out the, the acidity and brightness and nuance of a light roast. So. We'll see how it goes. We'll come on in close and check out the roast. All right, welcome back everybody. So now we're about 24 hours after roast on the roast we did yesterday of the new Gesha. Um, I roasted the Ideal and the Ideal went a little bit short in the mid phase. And so I just wanted to follow up and just do a quick cupping of uh, that coffee. So I can kind of give you guys a little feedback on how that roast went. So. This is the cupping that we're going to do really quickly. Um, I have uh, that roast right here. So this is what I'm going to call the Gesha Short because it went a little bit shorter than the Ideal. This right here is my Gesha Ideal. So I put that back on the table because I really want to compare these coffees against each other to see which one is standing out or which one has qualities that I like better. You know what I mean? If, it's, if I'm just looking at one coffee on the table, it's really hard to, to basically understand like, is this one better than that one? Just from like a, a mind's eye perspective opposed to uh, now I have the reality of the ideal on the table versus the short. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna know in, in a few seconds here whether the short is better or worse than the ideal. On top of that, I also have another roast I did in the interim, which is a little bit opposite of the short, it's a long. So the mid and the um, development phase on this one went long. Um, so I have a ideal, I have a long, and I have a short. And so we're just gonna cup them all out quickly against each other, and then we're just gonna see what we get. I'm just gonna do the smells really quick, and I'm gonna pick up the cups. Traditionally, you don't pick up the cups. You know what I mean? It's not. It's it's a it's kind of a, a faux pas. It's rude on the cupping table. But I'm cupping solo, and I really want to get deep into these coffees. So I think of it a little bit like when you're at the winery and you're volatilizing the esters. So we're gonna do that a little bit. I'm gonna pick up my cups. So I'm just gonna move forward, and we're gonna do this together. There's lots of sweet florals in there, but then there's just a a really nice kind of sweet caramel smell. Very balanced of, of smell, but very nice. Okay, that one's a little more muted. So I'm gonna call that one, instead of orange blossom, it's more like orange marmalade. It's kind of like cooked orange. But then there's a there's a really nice like tea rose that I didn't get in the ideal. And, and, a, and a kind of like high caramelized sugar note that's really nice. So I'm going to score that one, my ideal, which I think is like, I'm going to give it an 825. And I'm going to score this one an 825 too. It's different. We said there's like a tea rose, a floral sweet rose note in this one that's really nice. Okay, now we're going to go to yesterday's. All right, now that one's a little muted too, but I think it's from lack of rest. And so we're going to call it Meyer Lemon. It's very Meyer Lemony. 
There's a lot of Meyer lemon going on there. So it's a little softer, a little more floral citrus. And the orange is more, more like orange caramel. Kind of a more soft developed uh, orange. And then there's a little bit of like kind of almond butter. There's a nice kind of almond butter note, a light, nice nutty note. So now I'm just going to hit them with water. I started my timer. I'm going to do a three and a half minute steep and then I'll break. I'll do the wet smells though as soon as I hit them with water. I really like the dry and wet smells on any new coffees I'm roasting and developing. I personally get a lot from those, those two uh, inputs. You know, you, you might not. You might get more from the break or more from the tasting. But I tend to know quite a bit about how the cup's going to develop, the flavor is going to develop, the flavor experience is going to develop once I do the dry and once I do the wet. Okay, so now that one's got a lot of the tea rose going on in the wet. It's very floral. It's again, once again, it's the orange blossom kind of thing going on. It's almost like a spring field, okay? And that, that's just ripe orange. It's almost like someone just handed me like a super ripe orange. There's the blossoms kind of coming out there, so I'm getting more of the orange blossom now. And there's that caramel again. It's a little more caramel going on. And I almost want to call it a caramelized melon. It's like there's a summer melon kind of note in that one too. So this is a little harder to smell because it's so fresh. You know, it's only 24 hours off roast, so it's much more closed down. This one was roasted Monday, and this was roasted like two weeks ago, or 10 days ago. So that, that to me is just more like marmalade. I don't even know what citrus was used. It was more like citrus marmalade. Okay, there's some nice kind of almost like lavender-like florals. So some different florals going on in that one. And then I just like, almost like, I'm going to say orange juice concentrate. Almost like I just opened up a can of orange juice concentrate and smelled like very powerful, I don't want to say sour, but more acidic smelling orange. Very, very, uh, very acidic, which it makes sense. It's the shorter roast, so it, it smells more. I almost want to put coffee pulp down, you know what I mean? But it's not really coffee pulp because it's much cleaner than the coffee pulp smell. But that's the smell you get a lot of times in a really nice, clean, washed coffee that uh, is roasted very light. Ooh, that one's that one starting to smell nice now. It's, it's very much more round, and there's more aromatics coming out of that one. I think aromatics, fragrance. I always get confused. You can see I'm only doing two cups of each. This is very much what I do for cupping. Uh, production roasts. This isn't a sample roast cupping. This isn't a green grade cupping. This isn't a green sourcing cupping. This is a production cupping. I'm looking at roasts and comparing different roasts. So two cups for me is plenty of cups for that, that type of cupping. I could even be using one cup, to be honest. Okay, now we're at our time. They all, they, for me, break is about congruence. It's about how congruent the dry, the wet, and the break are. There's something really, there's an anomaly that appears, like an odd smell that I haven't smelled so, smelled so far, so far. Then I, then I kind of note that in my head. But I don't do a lot of data acquisition in break for me. It's, ch it's a challenging part of the cupping. So everything was congruent there. I let these coffees cool. I'll skim them, and then I'll start tasting them and just follow up with some tasting notes. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so if you guys remember from the beginning of the video, the ideal is a 13% moisture loss or 13% weight loss with uh, the Lightels or the SEA uh, Gourmet scale at a 63.4 uh, uh, color reading, I should say, which is right in that kind of light zone, I want to say, of, the, of, of roasts. Okay, now over here, the redo of the ideal that went short 
This one scored or had the same uh, moisture loss, so 13% um, uh, moisture loss or weight loss in the coffee. So very close uh, development, I want to say, from both from coffee to coffee. The light tells reading on this coffee was 64 on the SEA Gourmet scale. So over here we have 63.4, and over here we have 64. Uh, the larger number is the lighter uh, of the two. So this one over here is 0.6 measurement. I guess lighter, so very, very close. See what I mean? I'd say you probably can't really taste like less than a two two numbers on the measurement. You know what I mean? They're they're pre they're re pretty close, um, and you really can't tell by eye at all. But they're they're pretty much within a little, little bit more than a half a point on the measurement scale, and to the exact same uh, weight loss too. So very close in uh, roast level, I should say, of these coffees. Even though time was different in phases, the roast level, the final roast level, and the the, the, the part of the coffee that we got rid of through the roast process was, was very equal. So that's great. So we're comparing apples to apples somewhat, you know, other than roast time and things like that. All right. So with this one, the ideal, it cupped out pretty much the way I'd expect it to. Uh, the flavor notes I got were bright citrus, floral citrus, uh, thin and clean. And I don't say thin in a negative. I say thin because it's, the Gesha has very much an Ethiopian type body where it's a thinner, cleaner, washed body. So it, it tends to have a, a thinner, thinner body. So this one was pretty much right where it was at. That was the hot flavors, and I kind of summarized my flavors too. I'm not going to go into deep detail on the, on the, the, the flavor notes. Um, and then as the coffee cooled, it very much got, it became a lot of bergamot. I got a lot of bergamot quality and a lot of the orange blossom. So it was pretty much right what I expected to be. Now this is the one that was a little odd. This one we didn't roast or talk about at all. This was just a longer version of the ideal. So I put it on the table just to have some comparison contrast to the two, to the short and to the ideal. So with this one, I got orange candy, softer mouthfeel, and it had a fuller body. You know what I mean? This little bit longer roast. The body was a little more full. Instead of like the brighter blossomy kind of orange taste, it was very much more like an orange candy, like a little bit rounder, a little bit softer. You know what I mean? And then as this one cooled, I called it orange caramel. It very much became like an orange caramel. But then I also called it zesty. It was, I don't mean zesty like just, just like zest or zesty like a flavor descriptor. I mean zesty in context of orange zest. It seemed like it was a lot of like zest taste, like mildly drying, but very full of flavor and very reactive. So it was kind of neat and different. I wouldn't expect that in a longer roast. And then the short was re really surprisingly my favorite in the table. It was odd. I did not think that was going to happen. Um, it wasn't part of my plan. And I called it at hot, juicy citrus blend. It was almost more like a blend of citrus. Um, and then Meyer lemon. It had that very Meyer lemon, which I consider a more delicate floral citrus fruit. That was very much in this one, in my opinion. Um, and then I also called it sweet. And there was a summer melon note that was really nice, round, sweet kind of flavor. Um, and then as it cooled, it became like magnolia, like very floral and citrus, like citrusy floral, but in a sweet, balanced, juicy way that was really nice. And then I also called it Meyer lemon. It very much became that floral Meyer lemon because a Meyer lemon is also a sweeter lemon. And then I just called it citrus. It had a very round, complex citrus note. So I ended up liking this one um, a little better, you know what I mean, than the other uh, two on the table. Although it's also really short off rest and that could be an impact of the overall uh, experience. So I'll probably redo this cupping later in the week, maybe next week, just to see if the results uh, come clear then. And I'll probably do it blind so that I don't really know. But we're hopefully gonna get this Gesha up for sale very soon and then we'll include these roast profiles. So I hope you guys enjoyed the roast along and then also the kind of follow up cupping. But I gotta get to uh, roasting some other coffees today. So you guys have a great day and we'll talk soon. All right.